Hi, this is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. We are ready for part two of the blanket stitch applique in the Great Lakes Voyage book. Remember, the book is available on my website, onpoint-tv, along with many other books that I have there, books and patterns. So in this session, we're going to talk about the fusible applique and a blanket stitch. Enjoy. We are now ready to create the fusible elements for our design. So I've got the fusible elements and this is like what the page in the book looks like. So here's like the petals and the leaves and stuff. And I want to talk to you about a new er fusible. So this is, we're in like the middle of 2021 and this product came out readily available to retailers about two years ago. And I started using it about a little over a year and a half ago. Love this stuff. This is called Hot Fix Adhesive. What makes this a little bit different than all of the others is all of the other fusible appliques. And if you've seen my videos where I've used Steamaseam Light, now I have not sworn off Steamaseam Light. I still love Steamaseam Light, but I'm going to tell you why this one works really nice for this. So with Steamaseam Light and all of the other adhesives, you have to be very careful how long you press that fusible fusible to your chosen element. So let's say a flower petal. How long are you going to fuse that down onto the flower petal? If you fuse it for too long, then all the adhesive goes into the flower petal and then there's not enough to actually attach the two pieces together. With hot fix adhesives, you don't run into that problem because you are pressing it onto your chosen fabric for 10 seconds. That's a long time, but the bond that it creates is fabulous. And when you take off the paper on the back and put it onto your backing fabric, the connection is really, really fabulous. And I've stitched through three layers in a particular design, no thread breaking, no thread skipping. The other reason that I like this for this particular project is this can go through your ink jet printer. Now you can purchase the hot fix adhesives on a big long roll that's 12 inches wide. I think it comes in a four yard or a 10 yard, or you can purchase it in a 12 by 12 sheet that I'll explain in a second, or you can now purchase it in an eight and a half by 11 that goes through your ink jet printer. Let me emphasize that one more time. Your ink jet printer, not your laser printer. Then they're done that. Not sure how we're going to fix that printer now. So your inkjet printer. You can send the designs through and it will print it right onto it. And then you're ready. You don't have to do any tracing. It's ready to be fused down. You can, of course, trace around your elements. So because where our studio is, there is no ink jet printer. There's only a laser printer. Yeah, I'm going to have to trace some of these. So easy as can be, just using a regular ink pen, just tracing the design onto the paper side of the hot fix adhesives. Now I mentioned that you can also purchase this in a 12 by 12 sheet. Why would you want that? Because it works so great in any of your electronic cutting machines like the scan and cut and I've done some previous demos with the scan and cut with that you press this down and then the, the mat is a 12 by 12 so you can put the entire sheet down and you can cut them all out with the scan and cut the silhouette the cricket any of those electronic cutters when you fuse your fabric to this adhesive it's like cutting paper and works beautifully so that is a new adhesive that i'll want you to maybe look into maybe that'll be something you'll want to give a try so now it's time for me to iron these down onto my applique element so this is the back of my chosen fabric for my flowers here is my hot stitch adhesive it's hot fix adhesive. Now I'm going to iron it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to count to ten again. You really need to adhere this to the fabric really well. And what's cool is you can't over iron it. That's amazing. So I'm going to just do a little bit more on the top and bottom. 
and then it'll be ready. So I do want this to completely cool before I start cutting it out. And so here is some of the leaves that I've done. And sometimes you're going to want to save a little bit of your fabric. So I did cut the leaves out. I'm going to out of the adhesive before I put them down so that I knew that I was using as little fabric as I could because honestly this fabric's like 15 years old and it's the last piece I have. Didn't want to waste it. Now I'm going to cut it out because I don't did not hook this up to my scan and cut. That would be a whole nother class. The scan and cut would have cut it out beautifully without having to do any drawing or anything. But I'm just going to cut it out with a really sharp pair of scissors. And because the design edge, what you see is what you get, you want to be sure that that edge is really smooth. So sometimes on a leaf, I might actually use my um, rotary cutter and just cut it out that way. Because you know, it's all right with me if this leaf is maybe a little bigger than the design, or maybe a little bit smaller. I'm going to cut this one a little bigger there and a little smaller on the other end. That's okay. Never found a leaf that grew exactly the way I thought it would. So all of my pieces are cut out now, or at least I think enough of them that we can move on. When you are working with this design, oops, there's all my pieces. You just want to place them where you want them. It's really up to you. Take your cutout elements. Oh, and this is what I need to show you. So here they all are all down. But to get the paper off, especially with this, and sometimes this will even happen with the other fusibles, it's hard to get the paper off. You'll sit there and you'll be like folding that, increasing that, and trying to get that off. I have found that if you just score it, whoops, with the point of your scissors, so not the super sharp point, not an X-Acto knife or anything like that, just that edge of your scissors, if you score it on the back, you can just take that paper off very easily. So be sure you don't score too deep. And then you're just going to place it where you want it on your design. And then again, you're going to practice your patience as you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then move it down. Now, the truth is, if you are using steam -a seam light, you are supposed to press it down with steam for 15 seconds, which is really the single biggest problem with steam -a seam It's not the product's problem. It's the person using the product that you just don't have enough patience. You have to really press that down for a long time with steam. Read the directions. You'll see it's like 10 to 15 something. I go 15 seconds to fuse that all together and that way your needle will not get all gummed up and your elements will stay down. When we come back we are going to do the blanket stitch applique on our design. I have my entire design laid down and fused, so be sure that you take a lot of time with the fusing. Be sure that it's completely fused down the way the manufacturer tells you to. Now this particular design is quite long, so I like to take and roll up at least half of it. We're going to work on this section, so I'm going to roll this up and pin it just so that it's not all flopsy and getting in my way. And at my machine, I want you to notice that I've added the acrylic table to it. Now with this FAF icon, the acrylic table is actually made by FAF and fits on. But if you have another brand of sewing machine, head to your, manu your sewing machine dealer and ask them to find you an acrylic table that will fit on your machine. And here is just a little tidbit of advice. You can get small ones and you can get ginormous ones. Ginormous is too big. I think the perfect size, even for free motion quilting, is about 18 by 24. Now, if today you can only afford a 12 by 12, I recommend you do not buy a 12 by 12. I recommend you put that money in the bank and you save up until you can afford an 18 by 24. I find that to be the most useful size for an acrylic table. Now if you're really blessed, that means that you have your machine sunk down into a table so your whole machine surface is flat. Yep, you're blessed. You're set to go. You can do all the free motion quilting and applique that you ever need. On my machine, I have set it up with my open toe applique foot. Now your regular foot has you know, like this little bit of, let's move that. 
this little bit of plastic in front of it. Yeah, the straight line is right in the middle, and that works, of course, great for your straight line stitching. But for blanket stitch applique and invisible applique, that open toe is going to make a world of difference so you can see what you're stitching. The thread I'm using is King Tut by Superior. Now, I really like this because it is a 40 weight cotton, which I think is perfect for blanket stitch applique, so you can kind of see it. And I really like this particular kind because it is variegated slightly. So it is variegated from medium red to medium dark red. So it's not going all the way from white to dark red. That's way too much variegation, but it's just enough to work perfectly with blanket stitch applique. Now I'm ready to do the blanket stitch and I found it on my machine and I'm just going with the width and the length that my machine comes up with. And I want you to show you a little trick. So I'm going to do the green and the stem first, but do you see how this leaf is actually, the point of it is under the stem? Anytime I have a leaf that's like that, I want to stitch it down first by moving the stem out of the way. So then when I start my stitching, I don't even have to worry about a backing stitch. I don't have to worry about getting a perfect point. It just makes doing the stem that much easier. So when we are doing blanket stitch applique, you have to be sure that you do not force turn your design. So as I'm coming to this curved angle, I have to stop, lift my presser fit, foot, and turn my fabric underneath. If you try to make it turn while you're stitching, you will end up with puckers. You also want to turn when your needle is on the outside of the design. So here it is on the outside of the leaf. Now it can turn and then continue stitching. You never want to turn when it's here on the inside of the design. When you turn, that will actually separate the Revert, returning stitch and it just doesn't look good. So always stop, turn when you're on the outside of the design. Now we're coming up to the point which requires a little bit more fussiness. So right here, I'm going to stop as I show you that I turn a little bit more so that stitch will be going a little inside the design. Then it goes forward just to the point of that leaf. Now I'm going to turn it so the next stitch is going to go right into the leaf. Then I turn it again as it takes one stitch and I'm going to do that stitch so again it's kind of on an angle and then I can continue down the other edge of the leaf. Turning on the outside. Anytime you got to turn, stopping, oops, don't stop there. Take one more stitch, there. And then I can complete this leaf going all the way to underneath the stem. So I have stitched the leaves that I've chosen to put under the stem. Keeping in mind, it's up to you where you put your leaves. So here I just peeled that back a little bit or folded it back, was able to stitch it. Now the stem will go right on top. This little guy, just a little bit under it. But this one here, you see that he is next to the stem. So I'm going to show you now how I do that. So I'm going to start here at the top of the stem, right next to the flower. And I need to do a locking stitch. So I'm going to let my machine go forward two stitches, then back, and then forward again. And that's going to be enough of a locking stitch with the blanket stitch applique. Now let me continue down this stem until I get to that leaf. Here I am at a leaf that is not under the stem. It is next to the stem. So what I want to do is go until I can get to the part of the stem, flower, the leaf in this particular case that is right next to the stem. I'm going to take one more stitch on my stem and stop. Now I'm going to turn and I'm going to do the right hand side of the leaf. So since this is at the point, I'm going to go into the point. Then I'm going to do my turn, and keep in mind, getting, oops, I missed the point there, 
getting those stitches just like I did exactly where you want them on the point is difficult on a good day. Um, you'll never get every point just right with the little stitches going in just the way you want them. So just know that every leaf has a little bit of curve to it. Every leaf might have a little kink to it. So don't stress out about not getting perfect points. Just do the best that you can. So here I stitched down on that stem and I didn't have to cut the thread to start the leaf. Since the leaf was attached to the stem or right there next to it, I just went until I could find the point of the leaf that was right next to it and just turned and continued on to that leaf. So I'm going to try and get this point really good. Oh, so far so good. Now turn and make one stitch in. Now come one stitch out. Take that in and then I'm ready to do the angle. There you go. I know that I got at least one really nice point on this piece. So as I come down to the end of the leaf, oh, always turning on the outside, I'll be able to just continue down the stem and then adding those leaves in. So as I get to another leaf, I'm just going to be able to jump over onto that leaf and continue my blanket stitch. When we come back, I'll show you how to stitch the petals with an inside valley. I want to show you how to stitch this petal, and the reason I want to is because this inside valley, and you'll run into that a lot of times with your blanket stitch applique. So just like with the leaves, you want to be sure that you're turning on the outside, which is also going to be the case when you're doing the circle. So on this really curvy part of this leaf, I'm going to stop almost every stitch to make sure that I get a nice, gentle, curve and that's what you'll do when you're stitching down your circles too. So here I'm going a couple and I'm coming to that valley. Now I want you to remember that you are stronger than your machine. The reason that's important is because it's it's coming to the point here. I'm going to take one more stitch and I'm going to make it land right in the middle. I forced this to not take a normal size stitch. Now I'm going to make one stitch in and this time again, I'm going to, oh, it wanted to go forward, but I did not let it. I held it in place. So now I can turn to the other angle and now I can continue with my stitch. So the idea is that you want to force your machine to stay in place for those stitches so that you'll get one stitch to the right, one stitch to the center, and one stitch to the left. So let me cut my thread off here, even though I'm not done. And there you go. So we've done the blanket stitch elements that you are most likely going to run into. There are times that your elements will be under something. Now, if it's a fusible on a fusible, well, obviously you can't pick up the fusible to stitch underneath. But in the case like this, being able to move that stem out of the way will just give you a cleaner look on those stem, on those leaf points. Now, there are some people that will do the fusibles where they'll put one layer down, stitch it, put another layer down, stitch it, and then a third or a fourth layer so that each time they're adding the layers and stitching it. That's not going to be me, but if that's you and it works for you, then go ahead and do that. When you're done with your blanket stitch, your hand, your reverse, whatever kind of applique you're doing, the next step is to press everything very flat and then trim it down to the design size. So this is going to be our long border on the top of our learning to quilt to quilt. The next time we get together, we will be making the quarter square triangle border that will go all the way around. If you're interested in the pattern for everything that I'm making here, that is available on our website, onpoint-tv.com. Go to the books and you'll be able to find that and all of the other books and patterns that I have there, including the notions like the seam rippers and the pin cushion. If you like what you see, you could consider joining my channel. So if you join the channel and you're a beginner level, that means that you like the show enough that you want to keep it on. If you don't join as a designer level, that means that every month we have a Zoom class for all of the members of the design level so that they're learning how to use the electric quilt 
program, which happens to be the program that I use for designing this quilt and pretty much any other quilt you ever see me working on. If you choose to be a quilt addict, which really we're all going to raise our hands and say, yes, I am a quilt addict. But if you want to be a quilt addict member, that means that you not only get to be part of the electric quilt Zoom training sessions that we do once a month, but you also get the electronic version of all of my books and patterns as they come out. So if you happen to be an addict member at the time that this is being um, shown for the first time, that means that I have already sent you the electronic version of the book. So for those of you overseas, you can always purchase the electronic version. And it does take a lot of extra shipping if you want me to ship you the hard copy, but I'll do it if you want me to. So thank you for joining me. And next time, we'll continue with the Learning to Quilt 2, otherwise known as the Great Lakes Journey Quilt.